It's not often that I'll cover an RPG Maker game. Usually the game has to do something outside the box or catch my interest in terms of features or plot before I even think about giving them a go. Tales of the Black Forest does a bit of both. It's an RPG Maker game with horror elements. It touches on Japanese folklore as well as certain historical events that happened in Japan, though names and places have been fictionalised for the game, and I'll follow the Japanese naming style of family names first. The game caught my interest and, well, here we are. Tales of the Black Forest is set in 1998 and puts you in the shoes of Kihara Kashin, a girl who awakens at Shikanaki Station while on her way home. Kashin was involved in a car accident when she was 8 years old, and the accident had killed her mother. Kashin had miraculously survived, but any memories of her life before the accident and of her mother causes a dark forest to appear in her memories, preventing her from remembering. Shikanaki Station is based near Shikanakimura, which is a village, and Kuromori Town. Kashin knows, presumably from her father, that they had lived there prior to the accident. The area is surrounded by a dark forest and shrouded in mist, and after walking in and looking at a fallen loudspeaker to get a certain item, she is teleported and meets the mysterious author Kiritani Yuki, who is unable to speak, and explains by words written in her notebook that Kashin's appearance to this area and her inability to speak is the result of a curse, and in order to break the curse, they must travel to Kuromori-cho Gekijo, in other words, the Kuromori Town Theatre. Yuki also explains to Kashin that she had been granted a mysterious ability called Nensha, which allows her to travel back in time through the memories of working electrical appliances. And using this skill, they will try and solve the mystery around the curse, as well as Kashin's memories while avoiding danger and helping others in the process. The game does draw inspiration from historical events in Japan, such as the Japanese acid bubble which burst in the 90s, and the sarin gas attacks carried out by the cult Om Shinriko. But... Is this indie RPG made an RPG maker any good? Find out in... The Good I like this game's setting and atmosphere and how it ties into the story. The game also uses its own custom assets, which is a big plus in my book for RPG maker games. Given the two historical events I mentioned earlier, I don't play a lot of games that cover one, let alone both of these events. The game's use of sounds and music really adds to the atmosphere and even initially had me on guard and the use of music in certain places really helps reinforce the feelings of the moment. There's always something about abandoned villages and towns that just creep you out, and the music in those areas really doesn't help make you feel safe. The game also covers some Japanese folklore as well, such as the Fox's Wedding for example, and the events covered throughout the game ties in very well to breaking the curse. The stories without spoiling anything were actually pretty heartwarming given that this game has horror elements. The pixel art style in the game I feel has been done very well, and I can say likewise to the character art, so props to the developers for that. Another thing to note is for folks who aren't familiar with some Japanese terms, the game gives you a brief translation of some of the romaji present which makes it more accessible. The gameplay was something I also enjoyed. As you explore the various places in the game, it does mark out items of interest so you can spot them easier, and other things you can interact with might result in some dialogue. Some of the things you might find during a chapter may relate to something else in another chapter or towards the overall story itself, so I did enjoy trying to piece things together. To keep things fresh, the game will also throw some puzzles your way which aren't supposed to be really easy, nor really hard, though admittedly I think the puzzles do lean towards the easy side. The game also does have its moments of tension with a stealth section and things chasing you over the course of the game resulting in a game over if you're caught. Thankfully, the game also likes to autosave a lot, so if you forget to save, chances are there's an autosave before a key event. Hell, the game even autosaves before the ending, and will not override said autosave unless you load something before that point, forcing the oversave system to override it. It even encourages you to save manually before the ending, so that way you can experience the two that the game offers. However, even this game has faults, and that's what we're going to be looking at in... The Bad. I felt that the game was a bit on the short side. If you take your time and read things, the game can take up to 4-5 to five hours to beat, and I felt that there could have been more potential to it. Some of the locations in the village and town could have been expanded on and have their own stories, as the atmosphere in that area is perfect for the horror elements. This can also tie into the story around Kashin's family as well to build up on things, if you excuse the pun. I found that due to the story's pacing, there were a few questions left unanswered during my playthrough, and some areas I've dealt with left unresolved. There is a difference between left to interpretation and leaving things unanswered, and these things I felt fit the latter more than the former. Thankfully, there wasn't a lot for me to complain about here, so let's wrap things up with... The Opinion Tales of the Black Forest is a short but pretty neat RPG Maker game. 
The story is complemented by its pixel art style, use of music and sounds to build atmosphere, and its inspiration from folklore and historical events. The gameplay was simple, and I felt as accessible to players with puzzles that weren't too easy or hard, and some stealth and chase sections to reinforce tension and horror. The only major letdowns I felt with this game was missed potential with exploring the settings a little more to pad out the length of the game, and the pacing of the story leaving things unanswered and unresolved. Though I will admit, one of the endings did have a bit which caught me by surprise, so it wasn't all that bad. If you're looking for a quick game to play over an evening, then this one is one to get. Bad aside, I did enjoy the time I spent with it, and it's good value for its price. So with that, it's time for my rating. I would give Tales of the Black Forest this angry rice ball rabbit thing out of 10. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next Infinite Backlog Review. If you enjoyed today's review, feel free to check out some of our other videos and subscribe for more. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram and our Facebook page. Once again, thank you for watching.